we have to change from doubter to believe. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to DTB TV. This is the preview, part one, for Liverpool v Manchester City, which, as I'm sure you'll agree with, is an absolute huge game uh, on, on Sunday. So I hope you're all feeling well. I hope you're all, you know, recovered from Brighton, which was a, you know, it was a sucker punch, wasn't it? But, you know, as a fan base, we all have to regroup. We all have to get sort of uh, ourselves back in the game, really, don't we? That's the main thing. So with regards to that... Uh, We've got to put it to bed, haven't we? We've got to move on and uh, and just go all out. Now I'm going to I'm going to go on to read a piece in a minute by Jamie Carragher because Jamie Carragher has wrote something I totally agree with this morning. And I, I basically, uh, what you know, I think this should give you a little bit more confidence uh, going into the uh, going into the match. So uh, let's just go through it now. So this is a piece by Jamie Carragher in the uh, Evening News. So, Jamie Carragher is predicting that Sadio Mane, Alison Becker, Ozan Kabach and Fabinho will play for Liverpool when they face Man City on Sunday. Pep Guardiola's side travelled to Anfield to face a team that has lost their last two Premier League matches at home, having gone unbeaten in the previous 68 games on their own patch. Wednesday night's 1-0 defeat by Brighton gave City a seven-point lead over Jurgen Klopp's side with the Blues having played a game fewer than the champions. Alisson missed the loss to Brighton through illness, but Carragher is expecting the goalkeeper Mane and Fabinho to, re to return against City and also thinks Kabach will be given his first taste of English football, allowing Henderson to move back into the midfield. Now that sounds fantastic and that is how quickly things can change. If we get Fabinho, Mane, Alisson, Henderson back into midfield and, and Kabach centre back and we go and win this game and we look solid the confidence of not only the players Klopp the fan base will turn so as I always say there's so many fans we have in our fan base now that they think we should win every game they don't and, and if we don't win every game then someone's got to go you know and in a way, I've got to start listening to what a lot of good close friends are saying to me. Just, just ignore They're not fans. They are not fans. It's as simple as that. And that's what I'm going to start doing now on this group. I'm going to stop. Stop. I'm not even going to wear. I'm not even going to wear them anymore. If I see Klopp out or anything on Twitter or anything anymore or talk sport, whatever, I'm not even going to give them the time of day on this group because... I suppose I was doing it because I wanted these people embarrassing because they they are an embarrassment uh, calling for Klopp out and calling for FSG out and all that. But do you know what? We don't need to highlight that. This is what one of my friends said to me. You don't need to highlight that because a real supporter already knows it, which they do. I totally agree. Uh, so, you know, I'm only three weeks into this DTV TV. It's going well. It will get better. And I've got to start being a little bit. It's, it's really difficult because I always say be yourself, it's the best way to be. But if I be myself, then I can be very, very strong in my opinion if I believe it's right. Because that's the way you should be, isn't it? Isn't it? If you believe in something, you should go through. There's no worse than somebody that agrees with you and doesn't actually agree with you. I'd rather people tell me, no, Neil, you've got that wrong. And I'd rather me say to them, no, you've got it wrong. And that's good because then at least you know where you stand with that person. So, for example, uh, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to have, just have a deep preview into this Man City game because it's such a big game. And if we do get the five back that even Carrig is saying there, then I, I suggest that you get your confidence hats back on because I think we'll beat Man City. Man City's last win at Anfield, I think, was about 20 years ago. Uh, so it'd be really interesting to see, you know, how we play with... It'd be interesting to see how Kabach does at the back. I mean, I don't agree with what Talk Sports say 90% of the time, but yesterday... When I read their article, they said, uh, you know, how can we sign two centre-backs and not play one? I mean, it's just a Klopp way, isn't it? Klopp doesn't start people when he signs them. But the difference is, that's Klopp when he's got a full-strength defence. He hasn't got that time anymore. He's got to get in the top four, at least this season. So he's got no time to be sitting here for six to eight weeks waiting for them to bed into his training schedule. He's got to throw them in. 
And that's why I was very surprised that Costas didn't start at left back on Saturday. Robertson's been poor now for about four or five games. He really has. And I love Robbo. I'm a, you know, I come from a Scottish family. He's a captain of Scotland. He's been the best left back in the world for three years. But he's in a poor run of form. I think you'll all agree with that. And I don't see the point in us spending £7 million on a Greek international left back if we're never going to give him a chance. And I don't even know what kind of type of player Costas is because I've never seen him play. I think he played pre-season friendly for about 40 minutes and I think all I remember is Milner having a go at him. That's the only thing I can tell you about Costas. So, Man City. They haven't got any strikers but Jesus at the moment. Jesus is back actually. Uh, but, you know, there's no Aguero. There's no Kevin De Bruyne. So there's no better chance to beat Man City than what we've got now. Yeah, they're on a great run. But look at it. Look, look, they're on a great run. Who have they been playing? Who have they been playing in these games? They've played... Every, every FA Cup game they get is playing against a League 2 or a League 1 side. Every League Cup game they get is either against a Championship League 1 or League 2 side. They've played the Burnleys. They've played all the teams. All right, but you can say, well, we haven't beat Burnley, but we've got eight players missing. And, it, and this was a really good stat I seen yesterday. They lost one centre-back last season, Laporte. That was it, Laporte. And they were 20 points behind us at this stage. We've lost our entire defence at one point. I think even Robbo was out at one point, wasn't it? We've lost so many key players. Thiago has only just started playing over the last five weeks. We missed him for six months. Jota, I said this a couple of weeks ago when there was reports, everybody saying, oh, he'll be back early February. And I said, no, he won't. He was still in a knee brace at the time. He won't be back till late February. I, there's rumours he might play against Leipzig. Not happening. He's not going to come after having three months out. He's not going straight into the starting eleven. He'll be on the bench probably if he is on the bench for Leipzig. Um, you know, and I said yesterday, I said we've got a real good chance of winning the Champions League this year. We really have. And now the fact that Leipzig can't even play in their own stadium where they've got an incredible record, you know, that's a real, real good advantage for us. So it's vital. This Sunday, the Kabach comes in and looks solid. Because if he does, that could be the signing we look back on and saying, that saved our season. That won us the European Cup or that got us into a, the top three or the top two or we won the league. Don't write off winning the league yet. I think Andrew Robertson was being quite clever with what he said after the game. He was trying to say, yeah, we're out of the title race. To probably lower the expectations of the fans and give themselves a little bit of breathing space to then go and do what Bright uh, Man City did. Man City's players came out and said they were out of the title race when we were eight points clear because they couldn't see Liverpool losing three games. But we have. And that's what we've got to remember now. As a fan base, we stick together. And yeah, all right. I know this is, there's not a rule book on how to be a perfect Liverpool fan because no one is a perfect Liverpool fan. But I always say that you know, it's like you can't say you'll never walk alone and then make somebody walk alone. Yous that are giving Divor Karigi hell on earth, you're not practicing what we preach. He's walking alone in your eyes. So leave the man alone. I said this. Whilst he is a Liverpool Football Club player, he needs to be supported. And again, I read comments last night. People saying, Neil, you said he's poor as well. Why do people get things I say so wrong? I said he is not good enough for Liverpool, clearly. But he's here. And whilst he is, he is here, we, Cinema Pongo wasn't good enough for us. Neil Mellor wasn't good enough for us. We still won the, the European Cup in 2005. Igor Bisham wasn't good enough for us. Jimmy Traore wasn't good enough for us. But as long as we showed them the support that we did and let the, the better players do their thing... We can win things. 2005 is a classic example of that. You know, so look at look Barcelona when we had all, you know, no Mo Salah and all that. We, we supported Divo Carigi. We supported uh, the players that came in and did a job. So all I'm saying is, is we've got to get behind them. And, and Klopp keeps saying the same thing. He keeps saying, for those of you that believe and have got our back, then welcome. And for those who don't, there's nothing I can do for you. I mean, I don't know how you can look at yourself as a Liverpool fan and not listen to Klopp and not and not think to yourself, do you know what? Yeah, I'm not happy at the moment. This is not what I want. And everybody wants to win every week. But I haven't said that. We did win every week for a solid 18 months. And to be honest with you, it's great. 
But I'll tell you something now. This is a little reminder that we're not invincible, right? We're not going to win forever. And you better be ready for some bad times because that's the cycle of football. You don't win forever. Look at Man United. They've gone through hell the last 10 years nearly. They're getting laughed at. Their you know, manager's getting gifts every flipping two weeks getting brought out of him. They still haven't won anything for a few years. Uh, so it's horrible when you're in that position. But the sad thing about football is, is we'll lose 20% of our fan base when that happens because they're only here for the glory. They'll piss off and support the next team that is, you know, doing well. Because they are. They, 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 they support the team that's doing well for bragging rights. But the, the core of the real supporters... I mean, my first game as a Liverpool supporter was the 1996 Pirelli Cup at Anfield when we won 2-1 against Inter Milan. 1996, uh, I, you know, I was 12, right? 12 years old. Uh, and we won 2-1. I remember they had Roberto Carlos and Zamorano. I think Roy Hodgson was the manager then, <laughs> weirdly. Uh, that was my first game. And I've gone through the Roy Evans era. I've gone through the Gerard Houllier era. I've gone through, you know, uh, Rafa. Then... You know Roy and Ke uh, and and uh, Doug Leash and Brendan Rodgers and every single one of them. We had a journey. We had a cycle. And what you've got to do is you've got to understand that to be a supporter. And this is not to the, one, the ones that, I, that know what I'm talking about. But to be a supporter, you've got to be prepared to take the shit as well as the highs because that's what it is: highs and lows. And losing is horrible. It's horrible when you're watching the game. And you, your heart's getting ripped out right in front of you. And you're looking at that clock and you're thinking, fucking hell, we've got 10 minutes. We've got 10 minutes to try and save this. And every shot you jump in. And I mean, even me, I applaud in my own front room. It's just a habit of going to games. Uh, but I, I always say this. I wake up the next day, right, when we, when we lose, I wake up the next day with even more pride in who I support. Because as a Liverpool fan, you know... The club needs you more when they're going through the crap than they do when they're sailing into world champions. That's 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 just the way it is. We've got a lot to look forward to. We've got Van Dyke to come back, Gomez to come back. Naby Keita should go in the summer. He's never going to play enough games. We should. Do you know what we should do? We should re-go again in the summer. We should get rid of Naby Keita. We should get rid of Shakiri. We should get rid of Oxley Chamberlain. We should get them all off the wage bill. Genie won Albert. He's not going to sign now, is he? We're in February. If he goes, then that's four. And I've said this, and I've got so much shit for it. Apparently, Jack Grealish had a two-hour conversation with Jordan Henderson. He looks up to Jordan Henderson, right? Jack Grealish, Erling Haaland as a striker, and then just go for Jota. I mean, Bobby Firmino, we absolutely love him. He's got about 18 months, two years left, in my opinion, at Liverpool. We've got to look to the future. We've got to plan for a legacy. And I say this, we've won one league title. One. Not ten. Not seven. Not two. Not three. One. And that's not good enough for how good this squad is. We've got to go again. This season has been taken from us. If we didn't have them injuries, we'd be ten points clear now. I know it. I just know it. So all we've got to do now is we've got to reshape this summer. We've got to reboot. We've got to get rid of the dead wood. And we've got to go again. We've got to make the right signings. And I've already said this. I'd bring in Haaland, Jack Grealish, and I'd bring in, uh, well, unless if, if this Kabach does well, then I'd just pay the 18 million for him. And that would be the three I'd bring in. But I'm sure you've got three. And it's like, I know that a lot of you don't like Jack Grealish, but I'll tell you something now. Against Brighton, if we'd have had him in the midfield, we'd have won. He wins free kick after free kick after free kick. And he also is the most creative player. He's been involved in 15 goals out of 19 games this season for Aston Villa. So to me, it's what we're missing. We're missing a creative midfielder. Thiago's decent. He's decent. But he's, better. he's a good passer. He's in Alonso. Alonso never really created... How can you describe it? Alonso was an assister to the assister, which is what Thiago is. He'll assist the person that assists. We need somebody, I'd say Thiago and Hendo, I think Fabinho is a world-class centre-back, I really do, and I'd partner him with Virgil van Dijk, let me know your thoughts on that, I really do think Virgil and, and because uh, Kabach is only 20 years old, he could learn off Virgil, I'd say Fabinho and van Dijk would be our best centre-backs, I really do, and then I'd have in the midfield Thiago and Hendo sitting, and then imagine Grealish in the hole, oh, you know, unbelievable, or you could play the 4-3-2, Two, four, three, one, two. 
with Greenish behind the front two. I mean, it goes like anything. But I don't see a better creative attacking midfielder in Europe at the moment that we could get. We can't get Kevin De Bruyne, so rule that out. Bruno Fernandes we will never get. Don't want him anyway. He looks like a rat. And he plays for Man United. So out of the top three creative players there is on the planet at the moment, Grealish is the only one I think, one, we could get, and two, would do a job for us. So, like I say, Man City, I'll, I will get Stephen Anthony to do a coach welcome, so we'll be doing a video for that. I'll do uh, part two of the preview tomorrow night and the lineup, predicted lineup for tomorrow night, which I hope is going to be one of the strongest I've put out. So, yeah, so let's read some of your comments because if there are no comments, they're not come up. That's cool. Anyway, that's cool. Like I said, this is part one for Man City. Let me know your thoughts and I'll speak to you all later. You'll never walk alone.